Hey guys, it's John. I'm playing some three minute, or sorry, five minute on Check. ACC. And this guy's playing extremely fast. Mr. Turkster. Okay, I'm going to adopt a dragon setup just based on the way he's playing it. Hmm. Let's throw an h6. I'm curious if he'll play bishop h4 or not. Nope. Alright. These positions are not at all my specialty. But why not try them in a blitz game? By the way, it's very late at night right now, so I hope you guys forgive me if I'm a little tired. Hmm. It's like neither side wants to castle in this position. Neither him nor I. Well, it'll be easier for him easier for him to castle, won't it? I'll do that. My knight is destined for d4 anyways. So I might as well play it there. Okay. Check. So I can significantly mess up his pawn structure now. I like the look of that. Maybe even block his bishop out of the game. Now, nah, let's just go queen d7. Preserve some flexibility. And I can stick my queen on f5. Or I can play for f4. Let's play for f4. Just want to see how he meets this plan. Lose his queen. Okay. Let's go queen side. I don't think he'll go king side. Yeah, that would be suicidal. So he's either going to go queen side and, yeah, play ball with me, or he would have had to do something crazy to unbalance. Okay, let's start with bishop f6. I have all these pawn break options in the center and on the king side. Please work D to G1. Well, how about G5? Hmm. This is an unusual move, but I like the idea of preparing E4. Let's do that. Preparing to double. Maybe I'll defend my bishop. He can play b4, but... Let's go here. I don't want to get my queen trapped. <laughs> That's obvious comment of the day, but it's true. Put the bishop on g7. I want to prepare e4. Like that's the move I really want to do. I'm gonna do it now. This guy's playing super duper fast. Check. So now c4 is weak, but he opts to go for an end game. Now I'll put my rook on f6. Can I win this endgame? Maybe. I'm gonna try, that's for sure. I feel like I have an inordinate number of rook endgames on this channel since I've been doing these videos. Really, you're gonna try to infiltrate with your king like that, huh? So rook f4, king b5. Hmm. I feel like I need to bring my king over for defense. Let's do that. Okay. Okay, now I can take this guy. 
And then when he takes on h6, I can take b2 with check. Let's go here. I don't want to lose my d-pawn. It would be bad if I did that. Let's see if I can get him in some sort of mating net. It's probably not going to happen, but... Check. Let's go here. Check. And I can stick my rook on f7. Play b5 and go rook f3 check soon. Okay, this is starting to look promising. Let's go here. Check. It's fine if he goes g6. Bring my king over to stop stop the pawn. Check. Yeah, I think I picked this pawn up now. Okay, so now I just gotta neutralize his play. Hmm. It's the best way to do this. Let's put him in, try to put him in Zogzwang first, just back his rook off maybe. It's the best way to do this. D5? Yeah, probably D5. Check. Because these pawns will advance on their own accord. Yeah, now I've got d4. I'm going to go rook c3. Check. Okay. I think I can even afford to just do that. Yeah, I don't need to take his g7 pawn yet. Now I can just advance this guy. He's going to be in Zug soon. Yeah, he can't stop everything that's coming at him. Now it'll just be a race against the clock. If I can do this before time expires, I think I should be able to. Check. Yeah. This is this is not Check. a problem. Not a problem. Okay. Yeah, um, you know, I'm down on time throughout this game, but I feel like he could have spent more time at critical points. I don't know why he was playing so fast. So, let's review. Check. Bishop b5 check in this position is a little strange to me because usually if they go for this line, like the Moscow variation of uh, the Sicilian, which is bishop b5 check, but without the inclusion of these knight moves, Usually if they do that, they preserve more options, like maybe advancing c3 and d4 in the center, for instance. I, ca I can't believe that this is a good idea. Like, there's nothing significantly... Um, uh, nothing, nothing significantly different for me about having my bishop on d7 versus c8. In fact, I think it can only benefit black, right? But yet he did that maneuver. So I adopted this dragon setup. For a while, it looked like we both were like shadow boxing and trying to like encourage the other person to castle one way, commit their king first. Here I might have played inaccurately. I took here, but ah, I guess it's fine. But maybe it gives him a chance to do that. Yeah, I probably should have taken here Check. first and then taken on d5. That would have been more accurate. That would have been a better way to ensure that I'm going to mess up his pawn structure and give him these double isolated pawns. So once we entered um, the check position with double isolated pawns, bishop versus bishop, I felt like I should have an advantage here, but it didn't really pan out that way. F5. I castled long, so did he. It's possible there's a different plan than playing for the e4 pawn break, but I didn't see it. I could try to play for g4, but that's it doesn't seem as feasible as the e4 break for some reason. 
Well, computer thinks my play is okay so far. Black maintaining the advantage. I wonder if I timed the e4 break correctly. Hmm, apparently not. <laughs> Computer says, what are you doing, bro? Just build up a little bit. Rook d8? Why would I play rook d8? What? What is the point of rook d8? Put my rook on one of the worst files available? King b8? King b8 makes more sense. Sometimes these computers are pretty useless in closed positions. The fact that it's not screaming out that I should break with a pawn maybe indicates that it's overestimating black's advantage. I wanted to go probing like his, his f3 pawn a little more, but I didn't see the point of it. And I was, I was mildly worried like at some point my queen would run out of squares. Maybe he goes like h4 or something and I take and he cuts off my flight square, my, my uh, escape square for the queen. So I went for e4, but I guess that was mistimed. Oh, I wonder if he could have thrown in queen a4 somewhere, like right now. Is that decent for him? Take on a7? Hmm, maybe it's just a perpetual check of some sort. Yeah, computer gives a draw. Take, king check. a8, king c7. Check. check. If I go to b8, he trades rooks and then plays queen d8 check, wins my rook, so I'd have to go here. He can perpetual me if he wants. Probably should, because this pawn is hanging too. Okay, so e4 was sloppy, but I had been gearing up for that move for several moves in a row. Check. In this endgame, I thought I was a little bit better here. But... Hmm. I mean, the only reason I say that is because I think my king can be become more relevant quicker than his king, and I feel my rook is better too, although I can't describe why, because both of our rooks are going to be tied down to a pawn. Maybe because I have the rook f4 option is why I liked it, whereas he doesn't. If he plays like a rook, rook h2, it's almost just purely a defensive move while keeping an eye on that. Now the best plan I could come up with here in this rook end game is just to move the king over to g7 to free up my rook. So that's what I tried to do. I thought he was going to go b4, was his whole point. Because then if I go b6, like my a7 pawn becomes weak. Yeah, and he can stride in with his king, and weakening these two pawns can't be a good idea for me. Or weakening those two squares, rather. So I thought that was his plan. Computer assesses this as equal. I don't know if I would have taken on b4. I don't think so. I don't know what I would have done. But um, he didn't do that. He did this. Still didn't play b4. And now I made the decision to take. He still should play b4 before taking on h6. See, I feel like this is where maybe some extra time could have been useful. Because if you look at the time, he's got almost a... A solid two minutes extra compared to me. But he, he whipped off rook takes h6. Like, I mean, it didn't cross my mind that he could play b4 here, but after rook takes h6, it's just, he's just worse. You can see the preceding play was also really quick. I mean, hardly any time is elapsing on his clock. Because this is important. Like, when you get to a new stage of the game, you have to adjust your mindset a little bit. Like, he just blitzed right through the transition into the middle game to the end game. Check. You know. Yeah, none of these moves are played with particular thought. Rook h2, maybe. As I've said before in my videos, like, I feel often like I'm not the one to criticize uh, Check. about time management. But I know personally, like, I'd rather use... I guess I'd rather use um, more than enough time in these blitz games to try to figure out like the best possible solution rather than using less time and just like moving around mindlessly. Not saying that's what my opponent did, but it kind of just looks like he was playing the first move that came to mind in a lot of uh, situations. Check. And now I'm winning. 
or close to it. Check. B5. And I figure just advance the pawns up to the fifth rank and check, check him on the third rank at some point, or do what I did here. Yeah, and then go stop his G-pawn with my king. That's the only thing that can do me damage. Yep, and now it's just a matter of getting coordinated, making sure I don't lose like an errant pawn. And it's just interesting to see how um, these pawns kind of propel themselves Check. with my rook's help. And I think this was instructive too, like Check. right here, um, recognizing that I don't have to take the G-pawn. It's totally okay to just play something slower like that. Engine even says rook b3 could be played. Probably that's even cleaner. Yeah. It's just over. Check. Check. So, yeah, I hope I don't give the impression that I'm being results-oriented. Like, you know, if this guy had beaten me on time from an equal end game or something, I might have been criticizing myself a little bit for using too much time, but it's just kind of weird. Like, the whole game, he just blitzed it and um, just played some second rate. He didn't play, like, bad, but he played some second rate moves along the way. And several moments where, if I were right, I would have stopped and, and thought, especially that transition to the end game. So if you're going to spend time on something in a game, like transitions and major turning points like that, like when we enter the rook end game, that's a good point to do it. So, okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And please leave me any feedback in the comments, as always. Thanks a lot for tuning in, guys.